afternoon or good evening, people in Turkey. This is Surya Wong, and I'm from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And I welcome to this briefing session of our undergraduate admissions and our programs and application procedures. Joining me today is our current student. You can see him, uh, well, Pierre, on stage there. He's a year one student and are doing engineering. So in 45 minutes, in the coming 45 minutes, I'll try my best to you know, cut short my presentation, a very brief introduction to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and then sh Pierre will share his, um, so far, the, the first year experience with you. And then after that, I'll cover the admission, the programs and the application procedures. And if you have any question, you can put it in the chat box. And uh, during my presentation, Pierre will try to answer you at, as best. And uh, when he's talking, I'll try to uh, reply you. Uh, 45 minutes is a kind of short for us, and uh, we will try to do the best we can. So I'll start sharing the PowerPoint right now. But um, actually, I would like to share a video with you, since uh, I assume not many of you have been to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. and See if you can watch this video right now. I hope you had enjoyed the uh, video. Okay, so I'll do the PowerPoint right now. Hope you're seeing all the pages right now. So um, you've been, you've just watched the campus aerial drum and aerial filming and of the whole campus. HKUST, it's the only campus in Hong Kong that's by the sea, and we are famous for our very, very beautiful campus. Well, if you haven't been to Hong Kong, this is Hong Kong, and this is probably your uh, impression about Hong Kong, a uh, cosmopolitan modern city cent uh, center in, the, in, in Asia and a financial hub. And all the hustle and bustle and very busy city, we are all that. And now back to uh, HKUST. We are a very young university. We are the, uh, we were established in 1991. So we'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary just next year. But that for that very uh, short span of time, HKUST has uh, achieved a lot. But before I talk about HKUST, here is something about Hong Kong. Hong Kong, like I said, it's a financial hub, the world's freest economy, uh, one of the best uh, city 
for students. So we have eight government funded universities, five of which make it to the world's top 150. Excellent transportation, and it takes only five hours to reach most of the Asian destinations. We are into international, very international, very cosmopolitan, and a mixture of Asian and Western influences. So this is a picture of the campus we're by the sea, and this is from the ocean shooting back to the campus. And we are kind of in a, a small hill and we are all our residential student residential halls are by the sea. So they're all the front rows are our UG student halls, which Pierre will share with you when he talks about his HKUST experiences. We are a young university and we're the number one young university in the whole world. So a lot of achievement. What about in Asia? We're of course in Asia and for the past uh, five or 10 years, we've been in the top, top five um, in different rankings of Asia University. What about counting all the universities in the whole world? We're now number 32nd among all the world's universities. So that's about the ranking academically and uh, our um, internationalization and everything. What about career prospect for our students? This, this is a ranking that we're really, really proud of um, for students that after five years, uh, after four years studying at HKUST, that's a really bright career prospect for them. This is a ranking by a um, agency in Europe. They conduct the survey every year. They will interview um, corporate um, uh, international corporations, multinational corporations, human resources um, and um, personnel and headhunters from over 2000 different companies and uh, from 20 different countries. So they will ask them a question, graduates from which university are more employable and they come up with this ranking and it's published every year by Times Higher Education. So graduates of HKUST is counted as the one of the top 10 most employable in the whole world. And for that ranking, we've been climbing up for the past six years. In 2013, our graduates ranked 18. And now, for last year, we, our graduates are number 10 most employable. Why are our employ uh, why are our students so outstanding among older graduates in the whole world? That's an excellence of the HKUST UG curriculum innovation. It's in our DNA. We've been trying to provide a very stimulating learning environment for our students. And we don't believe university is a factory for everybody because all of us will have different interests and different aspects and looking to things. And you might have multi different um, interests and we try to cater all your different interests and we're the very first one in asia or if not in the whole world to protect, to provide an individualized interdisciplinary major where you can really tailor your own major that's that's the flexibility and the support we give our students of course you can take one or two of our major degree programs but you can also um, tailor your own degree program that's the first in Asia, if not in the whole world. And this is Thomas, and he's the very first one, well, the, one of the uh, four first batch of graduates from interdisciplinary programs and uh, design a major that's called bionics. Um, when he joined HKUSD five years ago, there, there was no undergraduate degree in bionics in the whole world. And he came to HKUST, he joined our engineering program, and then he noticed we have this option open, that's the IIM, and he, you know, just went ahead and designed his own major. And now he graduated last year. So come to HKUSD, you can design your own major program. You know what this is, is and this is a drum. And naturally, I would say drum has really changed aerial shooting, aerial filming, the, the whole scene of aerial shooting, aerial filming. But if maybe you don't know, the owner or founder of this uh, drum here, it's called DJI. The founder of DJI is a HKUST alum. Um, when he was a little boy, just like seven or nine years old, he, you know, just had this dream of um, um, doing something called flying device, and he's really interested in flying device. And he came to HKUST with all the support from our different departments. He made this uh, unmanned helicopter and used it as his final year project when he do when he uh, did our his uh, undergraduate studies here, and that final year project really wasn't successful but then he went on and he got as I said all support of our faculties and um, now 
this is a DJI, this is the room, this is the unmanned helicopter, and it's air changed the whole scene of aerial zooming and filming. So you came to HKUST, if you have any, if you have a dream, we'll try, we'll help you to realize it. And that's the a drone in the sky. What about drone underwater? Uh, again, also developed and uh, by our um, alumni. Uh, you will see the boy in the middle of that picture there. He's a, is graduated like three or four years ago. He's an Indonesian student and he joined our engineering school again and he joined our very famous um, um, robotics team. And when he was doing robotics team and he was, uh, he met all his uh, future partners for this uh, uh, drum industry or drum company that he later founded. So Mito is the name of this underwater uh, drum and uh, it's now on sale. You can find it on eBay. So I've been talking about making or well, making the things that you wish to make. What about, what is it like to be a student at HKUC? Here is an example. Abraham is a local Hong Kong student and uh, he just like many of the Hong Kong students he's interested in business because Hong Kong is really an international and a financial hub so many of the local students will join our business school. Our name is called Science and Technology but we do have Asia's best and um, uh, business school and our EMBA program is number one in the whole world. So Abraham joined our business school when he first joined HKUST and for the first year, just like everybody else, he was doing all the foundation courses, just explore around. And at the end of the first year, he had the li uh, liberty to choose all the major degrees offered by the business school and interdisciplinary programs. And he found himself interested in environmental technology and management, and he changed to this program. So for the second year, he went to the University of Exeter for one full semester of exchange. HKUSD has probably the most comprehensive um, exchange program in Hong Kong, if not in Asia. We are partners and we do offer over 240 exchange programs for our students. So about over half of our students will have the chance to go overseas for one full semester of exchange and Abraham went to Exeter in UK for one full semester at year two. And during that um, half year at Exeter, he began to think about what about my career? What about internship? Is there any chance for me to get an internship while I'm now in UK? Why am I talking about internship? If you do remember about the ranking, the graduate employability ranking, our graduates, the three years to graduates are ranked number 10, most employable in the whole world. One of the reasons is 70% of a student will have internship experiences before they graduate. So here is uh, Abraham, and he was thinking about internship while he was in Exeter doing exchange. And he got all the support and advice from our career center advisors, and they suggested him to apply for a internship, environmental internship, by the way, at Airbus. So for the following year, he did got an internship opportunity at Airbus, and he took a gap year and did an internship there. He just got back to Hong Kong uh, last uh, September, and now he's doing his final year at HKUST. So many of our students will have overseas exchange programs, we'll have internship, there are lots of opportunities for you. What about if you're interested in research? Why I'm talking about research? Because HKUSD, while we are called the Science and Technology University, we do have to, again, probably the biggest uh, undergraduate research opportunities program in Asia. Uh, we do encourage our students, UG students, to take part in all the research projects um, led by our own faculties because most of our faculties will do scientific research. And one of the reasons making HKUST internationally ranked so high because our faculties are, you know, really into scientific and academic research. So you can, if you're into that, come to HKUST, you will have lots of chances to join all these uh, or, or um, join the research teams um, work with uh, postgraduate students, and you may even have the chance to initiate your own research uh, projects under the Europe program. So very shortly, I've covered, you know, um, the a typical student's life, our um, education accents, and um, I'll now pass the time to PA, who will tell you a little bit more 
about his experience. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Pierre. So, um, so uh, I will be sharing some of my experiences um, at HKUST. So, first of all, uh, my name is Pisichai Shavanachinda. Uh, it's a pretty long name, so you could just call me Pierre. Uh, I'm from Thailand. I did my uh, high school years in Bangkok and applied through the SAT and AP and, and IELTS um, pathway. So currently I am in my first year in the School of Engineering and I have, a, and my major is still undeclared. Now I will um, clarify on that later on. All right, so I'm sure a lot of you, before even considering a university, you probably would consider the location first, right? So, okay, backtrack to around two years ago, I was, finding places to go to for university yeah and I, I i looked at different countries and you know weighed all the comparisons and i ended up with hong kong so why um the main reasons why i chose hong kong there were four of them first was that it is where the east meets the west as uh, zorin had mentioned you get the best of both worlds you get um both the tra uh, traditional cultures of the East that are still conserved, as well as a lot of the modern influences that uh, are incorporated into the city. Now, another reason is that Hong Kong is a gateway to China. Hong Kong is very, very international, but it is still connected to China. And as we all know, China is a, an up and rising uh, major economy. So a lot of opportunities and a lot of um, resources are available. Um, in China. And another reason, the third one, major hub financially and internationally, what comes with it are a lot more opportunities. And fourth, and probably the most important one was, is that the food. Um, I've been to Hong Kong before, before coming to HKUSC, and I really love the food. And honestly- Yeah, Pierre, can I, can I interrupt a bit? I don't see your yeah. PowerPoint. Oh, you don't? Okay, sorry. Um, uh, okay. Can can you see it now? Yep. I think it's okay. true. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So let's continue. All right. So um, so the food, awesome food. Yeah. Now, so now that I was dead set on Hong Kong, I had there are uh, as Orin mentioned, eight government funded universities. So, you know, I had to choose why HKUST. So I had uh, six different uh, factors that uh, came into account into, you know, what university I picked. And I'm probably, I'm pro you know, you guys are probably um, thinking in the same way as I did. So first factor is the rankings, of course, right? Uh, second is the diversity. I wanted to come to a place where I would be able to experience new cultures and not just be in my own comfort zone. Uh, third reason is that, uh, third factor is that uh, I really wanted to have flexibility and the freedom for me to choose my own um, pathways for my career. Fourth reason, uh, fourth factor um, is that I want, I didn't, I didn't really want to learn only in the classroom. I wanted to uh, use the knowledge in real life, hands-on. And fifth one was that I wanted to look for a university that was well-connected with the rest of the world, with other world-renowned um, universities. And sixth one is fun, you know, which place would be the most enjoyable. All right, so, and then I, set my eyes on UST. And these are the reasons. So first of all, the rankings, for sure. Th this is very, very um, pretty important because you know what comes with rankings is the reputation and uh, you, know, you get to work alongside very, very talented people. Um, so you can see here, I think um, Zorin had already mentioned these rankings um, and as well, and in addition to these, uh, UST ranks 
very highly in each subject areas, meaning that you know we really specialize in the areas that we're in. All right, now um, the diversity. So coming to UST, I I have met people from from countries where I didn't even know uh, the name of their countries. I've never even heard of their countries before, and I got to exchange my culture with their culture, and it was you know very very interesting. Um, I've actually interestingly I I actually made a friend. Um, her name is Zeynep. She's actually Turkish. She came from Turkey. So, you know, uh, you come here, I'll make sure she takes care of you. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, another thing is the academic freedom. So, as I mentioned that I am still an undeclared major. So most of the people uh, in engineering in year one uh, are undeclared majors, meaning that they are not, they are not, um, uh, constrained to a certain uh, pathway. So in our first years, we usually take a lot of introductory courses and we get to experience, you know, a little bit of each branch of engineering. So we don't have to be dead set on a pathway um, right off the bat because, you know, nobody wants to be stuck with something that they don't like. So uh, you can see here, um, you know, all the different schools at uh, HKUST. So for example, for me, I am an engineering student, but the flexibility that HKUST gives is that I am able to take courses in any of the schools. So I can be taking, so I, I can take uh, a course in the business school, in the science school, in the humanities school. There's no boundaries there. So whatever is your interest or whatever your passion is, you can always, you know, uh, choose and pick along the way. And um, you can see here that uh, I have my timetable on there. So uh, another another great thing about HKUSD is that the flexibility comes down to even your timetables, even your daily routines. So uh, this is like a typical day for, typical week for an HKUSD student, for me, a year one student. Uh, so you can see that I chose all of them to start. Um, the earliest one would be at 1030 because, you know, I knew that I wouldn't wake up for a 9 a.m. class. So, you know, you're able to choose those stuff. So, you know, why not, right? All right. Now, another thing is um, research. So HKUSD is a research university. Uh, this means that the professors are also researchers. and uh, along with this comes a very great program uh, called the Undergraduate Research Oppor Opportunities Program, uh, or the Europe, where undergraduate students are able to work on research projects uh, with a supervisor. So uh, a lot of uh, the projects are, you know, you can choose which kind of project you would like to do. So it's very um, open, very uh, fun. So. As for me, I am actually planning to uh, take uh, Europe in the coming summer semester. Um, so, you know, uh, I think it will be a really great learning opportunity for me. Uh, another program is USEL, which is the Undergraduate Student Initiated Exper Experiential Learning Program. Quite a long name, but uh, so this program is basically that if a student has, uh, you know, a topic or uh, something that they're passionate about, they can write an application and submit it. If it gets approved, then the university um, will give funding, will give um, a lot of support. And one of them is the Aero team. So I was fortunate enough to join um, a lot of the workshop sessions. The photo of the of the red plane right there, I actually we actually um, built uh, the wings for it. Um, you know, it you you don't necessarily need to revise your knowledge or you know just catch up on things in the library in your at your desk you can always you know have a hands-on activity or things that uh, you really really enjoy so you know there is uh there are a, a lot of these kinds of uh things so you there's you know something for everybody and all right now exchange programs so uh I, when I picked HKUST, it was one of the major factors was the exchange program because I didn't want to, 
you know, just come to, you know, I'm already moving to another country, to another place, you know, why not just make the most out of it, right? And I found out that HKUSC had a lot of exchange partners. Um, and a lot of them are like very top universities, uh, like, you know, Cornell, um, UPenn, a lot of, you know, uh, great opportunities that you can have um, and you can virtually go to you know <laughs> almost every uh, continent I think the only one left is Antarctica but I think if Antarctica had uh, a university I'm pretty sure USD will be a partner um, and uh, like in like the case in uh, of Abraham's uh, you get to you get to open your doors to a lot more opportunities like internships or even job opportunities overseas. All right, now, I think the most important thing is fun, right? So moving to, HK, uh, moving to Hong Kong and going to HKUSC, I got to immerse myself into a lot of new culture, um, cultures from, you know, people who, you know, come from different, way different backgrounds. Uh, the Turkish friend of mine, you know, shared a lot of Turkish culture with me and and I share a lot of my Thai culture with her. So it's, a, it's you know, a lot of uh, diversity mixing around. And I got to do a lot of new things that I've never uh, done before. And for example, rowing. I've never done rowing before, but coming to USC, uh, I joined a society and I now I know how to row <laughs> boats. <laughs> and, you know, there are a lot of societies, uh, I think, almost a hundred or not even more societies and clubs. So, you know, you get to do things that you enjoy as well. Uh, I also did a lot of things that you might not think exists in Hong Kong. So you might think that Hong Kong is a very, you know, cosmopolitan uh, city, but I've been hiking a lot. Uh, I've went to the beach a lot, you know, went high island hopping, you know, go to different uh, places. And it's a very, very refreshing experience. Um, to see, especially in a place like Hong Kong. And uh, the most important fun that I've had is all the food. Uh, I seem to be focusing a lot on food, but yeah, uh, food is, <laughs> is amazing. Uh, I don't, I think it's like, like you can get lost on a street somewhere and walk into a random restaurant and you'd still end up being satisfied with your food. like. I, I think it's like really hard to find uh, a restaurant that serves like bad food. Uh, so, you know, don't, you don't have to worry about your stomach here. So everything's taken care of. And, you know, all in all, you get to do all of these things with amazing friends, with amazing people. And all of them are very, very supportive. And it is a very uh, nice and refreshing environment. And, I didn't factor this in during my um, consideration for universities, but this came as a bonus. Uh, so HKUC, I'd say, has the most beautiful campus in the whole world. Um, we are situated by the sea, so you basically wake up to the view of the ocean. I can look out my window right now and I can see the ocean. So that's like very, very cool um, and very relaxing as well. And also, uh, it's not like, uh, since it is quite, um, since it is a little far away from the city center, uh, we have a little more space. So things are a, a little more spaced out um, at HKUSD. So the campus is, uh, you know, not as compact, but, you know, uh, it is still, the buildings are still close enough to each other that you can walk from the dorm to a class in 10 minutes, you know, five minutes if you're in a hurry, like me, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think like these are some of the uh, things that, you know, kind of exceeded my expectations. So uh, the experiences that I've had at HKUSC and, you know, hopefully you will have too. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, this with a quote, Keep an open mind and you end up with a good time. Uh, I came up with it uh, 
don't care what Google says, but I think I came up with that and it rhymes. So that's good. So yeah. So if you have any other questions, you know, if you want to ask me about, you know, student life, staying in Hong Kong, moving to another country, you can always contact me. Uh, it's PCAG at connect.usc.hk. So four letters, P C A and G. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Pierre. Make sure you answer Tillman's question in the question column there. Go to the chat yeah. box and the question there and answer Tillman there. So I'll cover the admission and uh, application and programs part right now. Okay. So. Um, most of the major degree programs are four years and for the first year, just like Pierre told you, everybody will be doing foundation and common core and only to the end of the first year or even in the third semester or that will be the second year to start their major studies and everybody will have the chance to do one major, two major, one major, one minor or you have very flexible um, uh, combinations. To graduate, you must have 120 credits. So in four years and eight semester, there will be 15, about 15 credits for one semester. That would account for about 18 or 20 hours of studies every week. So a lot of free time for you to do extracurricular activities, research or exchange or whatever you wish to do. So 44 majors and 24 minors. We have four schools, science, engineering, business and management, humanities and social science and interdisciplinary programs office. So these are the major programs that we offer and you don't have to screen cap your every, well, it's all on the website. We do have joint school programs and interdisciplinary program. We mentioned a lot of times about the interdisciplinary programs. Our schools will collaborate and pro uh, provide all these uh, joint school programs. Just check it out. OK, and more and more university are working together to provide joint university program. Mind you, this is the world's very first joint university program. It's well, my seven years ago, HKUST collaborate with the University of Southern California, of course, in America and uh, University of Bocconi in Italy, in Milan and offer the world's first joint university program is called World Bachelor in Business. But this program requires SAT. So if you wish to apply for this particular program, you must have SAT. Or I'm saying we are the world's first to provide such a joint university program. We do collaborate with other universities like the University of Exeter, our engineering school has say three plus two collaboration with Exeter. The first three years, you will do engineering related programs at HKUC. The following two years, you will go to Exeter and DOS, do some law related programs. And when you graduate in five years, we'll have two degrees, one in engineering and one in one, maybe master of laws or Jewish doctor and issued by two universities. Our humanities and social um, uh, science school also offers similar program. We work with the University of Waseda in Japan. The first three years at HKUSD, you do global China studies, the program. And the coming two years, you go to University of Waseda to do either political science, economics, or global political economics. When you graduate, you have two degrees issued by two universities. So, like I said, very flexible. You can graduate with one major or two major or one major, one minor, one major, two minors, whatever the combination, it's very flexible as long as you can manage your time. And we do, you can see on the top right hand corner, no, bottom right hand corner, there's a dual degree there. So what's the dual degree? It's a five year degree program and offered by our school and um, it's called a dual degree in technology and management. So you will have a, a BBA degree and a um, Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Engineering for five years, you will be doing uh, courses from offered by all the three schools at HKUST. Okay, it's a five year degree, dual degree program. So for application process, usually everything is done online. You only have to go to our website and create an online account, fill in, uh, fill in all the information required, choose two major uh, degrees or options and nominate an academic referee or career counselor to write you a reference letter and upload all the required documents and submit the application before the application deadline. And when you have your examination results, just upload the results. So these are we do have two kind of um, uh, program uh, application choices. That's what we, what we call. We do have the program based application choices so you can choose 
single major and apply. Or if you don't, you haven't decided which particular major you're interested in, you just apply for a school, like you apply for the science, uh, for the School of Engineering, the School of Business, and for the first year, you don't have a designated major degree program. At the end of the first year, you choose your major, okay? So for science school, um, you do have to make a choice first. If you're interested in um, mathematics, ocean science, technology, or physics, or you, you must choose science A. If you're interested in biology related or life science related and chemistry, you have to choose science B. So make sure you do the, make the, uh, choose the right one, okay? So for 2021, application will start in September this year. And we do have an early bird uh, application deadline every year. That's usually November 15. And if you submit all your application by November 15, we're guaranteed to give you an admission decision by the end of December. Okay. We do have a main round uh, application deadline that's usually in January. So if you apply for 2021, the main round deadline will be January 2021. Okay, and we will issue offers for main round applicants starting from February. That will be next year, right? So for the requirement, uh, we do a lot of lo uh, many different qualifications. You can use SAT, IB, or GCA level, or if you can, we do accept Turkey uh, qualifications. You don't have to screen cap or write it down every year now. It's all on the website. So these are the qualifications that we do accept, okay? And the minimum requirement will be um, overall uh, average of, well, actually it's not uh, the minimum requirement. It's the average will be 75 or above for the Turkey uh, uh, qualifications. Make sure you have to require the subjects for the school or the programs that you try to apply. For example, um, on the fifth row, on the fifth row for engineering, if you're interested just like uh, PA, you're interested in engineering, make sure all the subjects that you have will have mathematics, that you have mathematics and one of the red dots. There will be one of uh, uh, biology, chemistry, physics, computer studies, or statistics. So mathematics required and one of the red dots if you're interested in engineering. Again, it's all on the website, but make sure you have the required subject when you apply. We do use English as the teaching medium, so there's a minimum requirement. You can use different qualifications or examination to satisfy the requirement. You can use TOEFL, IELTS, or IB English, or A-level. Uh, just check out the website. The minimum requirement for the English part are there, okay? Um, not all the major degrees or, or schools will require interview, but there are some. Uh, in view, it's required, okay? So these are the programs or the schools that will require an interview. You have to be, you know, uh, you have to do an interview before admission, okay? All the other programs or uh, schools, they don't require interview. Only selected cap applicants will be invited, okay? So if they don't have an interview, no worries, okay? It doesn't mean that you're, uh, you haven't, you know, uh, you will not receive an offer or anything. It's just that many of the students would be, admitted without an interview, okay? So these are the reference score for IB, SAT, and GCA level for the past three years, okay? For SAT, the mid-50 score range will be 1430 to 1500. That's the mid-50 score range. So money matters, um, the annual um, tuition fee in US dollar will be 18,000, around 18,000, that's the tuition fee. And uh, for non-local student, that means student who will require a student visa to study in Hong Kong, it's considered a non-local student. You are guaranteed two years university provider accommodation. And for the third and fourth year, please do expect to find uh, off-campus accommodation and, and pay for the off-campus accommodation. For the first two years, you have very, very high chance of, um, it's guaranteed of uh, a, a university provider accommodation. And the expense are listed there. They are 1,700 to 28 or close to 3,000 US. That's per year, okay? Personal expenses per year, that's estimation as well. So in total, there will be 26,000 to 27,000 US per year, including everything. So scholarships, there is a Murray-based scholarship, which is you don't have to apply. Admission scholarship, you don't have to apply.
your application and when you receive an admission offer, you will know whether you will have a scholarship offer. If the school or program decide to give you and um, to offer you a scholarship, they will send you the offer letter together with the scholarship offer letter. OK, there are other scholarships that will require in, uh, um, application. That's the, maybe you're a very good or talented sportsman. Then there's a scholarship for sportsmanship. You can try to apply. OK, but for admission scholarship, no need to apply. So there's a standard IB scholarship scheme. If you have 36 or uh, score 36 or above, there's, there's a chance that you have some kind of scholarship. Of course, if you have the top score, the 45, it's full tuition fee for and plus living allowance for four years HKUSD. Okay. For GCA level, there's a standard scholarship as well. If you have three A star, then it's a first year half tuition, just one one off. And you have five A star, so tuition fee and renewable for four years. Okay. If you have joined International Asian Olympiad gold, med uh, gold uh, uh, competitions and you have your gold medalist, then there's a special scheme for the Olympiad uh, competitions like chemistry, uh, physics, and uh, mathematics, for example. So since you're not local, you can do part-time uh, on campus during the semester. OK, and there's an internship. We do encourage students to do an internship and a, a career center will give you a lot of uh, um, guidance and uh, postings for internship as well. And for non-local graduates, um, the Hong Kong Immigration Department allow you to stay up to 12 months for job search in Hong Kong. OK. So that's about HKUST and this is our website and this is our email inquiry. If you have any questions, just email us, go on the website. And these are our social uh, uh, media platforms. Just use HKUST emissions. We are on all these. Um, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube and everything, even Weibo and WeChat in China. So that's our sharing right now. Okay. Do we have more questions? I think we have five more, two or oh, oh, four more minutes. Do we have we any do, questions? We, we do have a question. Uh, so, sure, okay. Yeah. Just let me, uh, which one? Which one? Uh, it's about the SAT super scores. You can see. So, uh, we don't have a standard scheme for SAT, but we do have a GCA level and um, Abby. For the others, it's a review case by case. Yeah. So um, for as for for me, I uh, submitted my SAT scores. So basically, just submit all of the scores that you have, and then they will basically consider uh, yes. it to your benefit. Yeah. So, no more question. How can we earn a scholarship? Um, just apply. <laughs> uh, chat. Am I missing any question? to email this recording. I think it will be shared on uh, IEFT cha YouTube channels shortly. Um, um, I think all the um, uh, admission talks are on the IEFT YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know how many, probably two days from now, you can you can find it on the channel, okay? Uh, am I missing anything? Then there's another question up there. Uh, is there any major about programming rather than computer science? Computers? I think most, I think uh, about computer science majors, you would do a lot of programming. Uh, like, uh, and if you enter as an engineering student, uh, one of you will, you are required to take at least one programming course. So I think computer science would be a major to go if you want to do a lot of programming yeah i think there was a question about a uh, foundation year um, that's for you foundation year can you can you choose something or there's a mandatory courses uh, required in the first year oh yeah uh, well of course uh, there are going to be required courses for each major that you want to uh, major in uh, and the list can be found um, on on the websites so Basically, in your first year, I think a lot of people would already have kind of a vague, um, you know, 
a vague what major they want to. A lot of students would take uh, courses that go towards that major. For example, for me, um, I want to get into aerospace engineering. So I took introduction to aerospace engineering, but uh, at the same time, I also took like introduction to mechanical engineering and um, other uh, courses in other branches of engineering. So you get to kind of explore and see if you really, really like what you want to do. I think we have covered all the questions and now I just hope you could offer some school for high schools. We do actually, and uh, I, I'm not sure about this year's arrangement, but you can just check Summer Institute, HKUST, Google it, and then uh, you can find it. But um, I think the majority of the students going to the Summer Institute are local students, but I'm not sure about non-local students, and because I'm pretty sure they don't have, it's not residential. So if you do take the Summer Institute there, you are expected to find your own accommodation during the uh, time when you study at HKUST. OK, and this is a special year. I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's no summer institute this year because of the situation. But then just check it in case I'm wrong. Well, Zorian and Pierre, yep. thank you so much for your participation. We came to the end of our time. Um, it was a great presentation. And if the questions, uh, if there are more questions, uh, the students can contact you on your personal email, which you dropped, I think, uh, on the chat box. So thanks again. For thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And look forward to seeing you at on campus or by email. And thank you very much. And look forward to receiving your applications. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye bye. See you, See you guys on campus. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.